The index fund is one of the biggest things to happen in investing in the last 100 years. In fact, if you're going to be investing money in the stock market, statistics show that your money should be in index funds. But what exactly are index funds and how do they work? Welcome back guys, Nathan here, and we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics which is the index fund. By the end of this video you'll have a really good understanding of the different indexes out there, you'll know exactly what an index fund is, how it works, and also why it's so important to investing. If you find anything in this video useful, be sure to click that like button, that would be much appreciated. Okay, sit back and relax. Here is what you need to know about index funds. Here is what we've got coming up. We're first going to look at what an index is and the different types of indices. We can then look at what an index fund does and then the pros and cons. Quick disclaimer. This video is for education purposes only. You should seek investment advice from a registered professional before making any investment decision. This video is not responsible for any investment actions taken by its viewers. Let me take you back to 1884. Yep, this was the cars back then. And look at these guys, look how pleased they are. This is the equivalent of a Lamborghini back then, thinking they are so cool. Also, the industrial revolution was in full flow and more and more companies began popping up. Then this man, Charles Dow, he wanted an easier way to assess the performance of stocks. What he did was take a collection of 14 different companies and he grouped them all together. He added up all the different stock prices, he then divided it by themselves, which was 12, and he got the average. And this way he could track a whole bunch of stocks in one number. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average was born. The Dow is still going today, but today it looks at the top 30 biggest companies in America. The S&P 500 index is the one to remember, as this is one that is widely used, and it is 500 of the biggest companies in America. So this is the best representative of the American stock market. And this way you can track the American stock market in one index. Some other indexes include, in the UK we've got the FTSE 100. And this tracks the top 100 companies in the UK. We also have a World Index, and this tracks over 1500 stocks from all around the world. And this index represents the stock market globally. But indexes have evolved since then and you now get indexes on all different asset classes and even different industry sectors. So this is the S&P 500 bond index. So if you want to look at 500 companies that issue bonds, so this will be corporate bonds, you can now look at it in one index. There are commodities index. So instead of looking at oil or just gold or just coffee, it groups together a whole bunch of commodities and you can track it in one place. This is an index of tech stocks. So this groups together a bunch of technology companies and tracks them as one. And you can see how well tech stocks are doing right now. But the one to watch is the S&P 500 as it's one of the biggest in the world. The S&P 500 is also known and referred to as the market. And since inception, the S&P has grown roughly 10% a year. So when people talk about the stock market going up and the stock market going down, what they're referring to is the S&P 500 index. And when people are trying to beat the market, they're trying to beat the S&P 500. 
And then in 1975, along came this guy, John C. Bogle, also known as Jack Bogle. And he's the founder of Vanguard. And he created the first index fund. So the objective of an index fund is quite simple. They don't try and beat the market. All it tries to do is copy the market. So the S&P 500 since inception has grown roughly 10% a year. And while stock investors, what they're trying to do is get an above market returns and beat the market. Here is what an index fund will do. The index fund will literally track the market as close as possible. So it will buy the exact same 500 companies and it will just track the market and you'll get market returns. And this is how an index fund works. Notice you can never beat the market and go above the index, but also you'll never crash below the market and get below market returns either. But unfortunately, this then created a big divide. And this is a battle that's been going on ever since. And it's between active investors. This could be individuals trying to beat the market and pick stocks, or it could be professional money managers like mutual funds or hedge funds, and they're actively trying to beat the market. And on the other side, you've got the passive investors. These people will just buy the index fund and do nothing else. And they are happy with just getting market returns. So when it comes to managing money, you've got a couple of options. You can try and do it yourself. You can use apps like Robinhood or Trading212 and try to beat the market yourself. Or you can hire someone to do it. IFAs are independent financial advisors or fiduciaries, or you can choose a company which hires a whole team of people, and these are called mutual funds. And there are pros and cons to each. If you try and do it yourself, the good thing is that you could beat the market. You could be the one of the ones that picks the right stocks at the right time and beats the market. It's also low fees, because you're not actually outsourcing the job to other people. And it can be quite fun. By using apps and building your own portfolio and stock picking, buying and selling, it actually could be quite fun. The downside is statistics show that you've got a 1% success rate. 99% of retail investors do not beat the market over the long term. Now, you may beat the market in the short term, over a couple of months, over a couple of years, but as soon as you go over about 10 years, 99% of people don't beat the market. Also, it's gonna take a lot of your time. You're gonna need to spend hours and hours studying, developing, analyzing different stocks. So it does take time. Pros and cons of an independent financial advisors or using mutual funds. Again, you could beat the market. You could hire a company of experts who pick the right stocks, the right funds, and they end up beating the market. It also doesn't take any of your time, which is great. And it also doesn't take any knowledge because you're just outsourcing it to somebody else. Problem is even professionally managed funds have a 5% success rate meaning 95% of mutual funds do not beat the market in the long term. And also mutual funds typically have fees of around 2%. And now we have a third option, the index fund. The pros and cons. Statistics show that this is the way to make most money in the long term. Also, they've got really, really low fees because they're not buying and selling all the time. They just buy the index and they just hold it. So the fees for the S&P 500 in Vanguard is 0.07, and this is 98% cheaper than mutual funds. It also doesn't take any of your time or any of your knowledge. So you can just buy the index and it frees you up to do other things. The downside is you're gonna to have to accept that you're never gonna get above market returns because the index fund just tracks the market. So you don't have control about which stocks are being bought. And a lot of people actually find this quite boring because there's literally nothing to do.
And as a bonus, I'm just going to let you know, in 2009, Warren Buffett was a bit upset with all the different fund managers charging these high rates of 2% when they were even getting under market performance. So he put his money where his mouth was and he bet a million pound that some of the top fund managers in the world could not beat the S&P 500. Nine years later, this was the results. So we got fund A, B, C, D, and E. One fund over nine years did just under 9%, one did just under 30%, one did about 60%, one did only 3%, and one did nearly 8% but the index fund did 85%. And also these fund managers were the best of the best, the top money managers in the world. They were trying to buy the right stocks in the right place. When the index fund, all it did was just buy the top 500 companies and then it did nothing else for nine years. And it still vastly outperformed the best money managers in the world. So there you are guys, you now know why index funds are one of the most important things to happen in investing in the last 100 years. So should you become an active investor or a passive investor? Or is there a way to get the best of both? Well, maybe. For me, I always follow the data. So the numbers say statistically, you will make more money in the long term with index funds. Plus you also get the benefit of freeing up your time. It doesn't take any time to invest in index funds. So you can also use that time to maybe start a business. However, if you wanna try and do both, then you could leave a little bit of money aside and use that money to try and beat the market. You never know, you might be the 1% that can beat the market, in which case you can build that side pot up and try to get the best of both. And also maybe have a little fun in the process. And that way at least you haven't risked your retirement money in the process. But as always, please do your own research to decide which one is going to be right for you. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. If you found anything in this video useful, be sure to click that like button. That would be much appreciated as it does really help out the channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button below as I've got some great videos coming up. And tell me what do you think about index funds? Is it something that you use yourself? Is it something that everybody should be using? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right, cheers guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.